everybody. In this video, we would be talking about the financial markets. In the last video, we were talking about the financial system. In this one, we would be concentrating on financial markets. In the last video, we said a good financial system should be efficient and effective. Now, how to make the financial system efficient and effective? We require one of the big dimensions is financial markets. Now, when I say financial market, I mean where buyers and sellers meet for financial instruments. The moment we talk about financial instruments, there is a huge list of financial instruments coming out of so many financial institutions. Now, if I say there's a large number of instruments available in the market and we are trying to deal in this, we are trying to buy, sell, this will automatically bring in efficiency. Now, in order to make it efficient, we need to do something. So, let us understand what is that something. That something is that we have to classify the financial instruments into broad categories. Let us try to take a simple example which will also help us to fortify the reason why classification is required and how classification would bring efficiency. So hypothetically and out of the box, let us try and imagine there is a market place where some 10 odd shops are there. So imagine these shops only have a number written from 1 to 10 and we really don't know what we would be getting in this shop. So there might be anything available in this shop. These are assorted goods shops. And let's say I want to buy a pen. So if I want to buy a pen, which shop should I go first? So let's say I decide randomly to walk in into shop 2 and the shopkeeper said he doesn't have pen. Then I move on to shop 3 and again I realize that the shop did not had any pen. Then I move on to shop 4 and I found the pen. Now don't you think I took more time to find the pen? Imagine if one of the shops was having stationery written there. My task would have been faster. The buyer and the seller would have met faster and the deal would have happened efficient and effective. So here we understand classification will facilitate the buyers and sellers to come closer faster and do good deals. The same logic we would apply on financial markets. Since financial instruments are huge in number, we are now broadly classifying the financial instruments into different categories. The first thing is we need to understand whenever anybody needs money, what is the purpose for that? So let us try to take a hypothetical situation that a set of people identifies an opportunity in the market and the opportunity is that they see that Brazil is able to supply low cost, good quality cloth. So if Brazil is a uh, is a country which can supply good quality low cost cloth. At the same time, I identify that Europe is a good market for ready made garments. Now, let us understand what is the business model in this. The business model could be that we buy raw material from Brazil, manufacture it in India and sell the goods to European markets. Now, this gives a business proposition. Suppose a set of people feels this is a fantastic opportunity. If this is a fantastic opportunity, how to encash this? To set up a business model like a manufacturing unit requires huge amount of money. Hypothetically, they started calculating the or they estimated what is the value or amount of money required to do this setup. Now, to have this large setup, the first few assets required is, let's say, a land, say, building, plant and machinery, etc. 
So certain assets would be required to make the first initial setup. Now hypothetically, the estimated values turn out to be 2000 crores. Now can I say these assets are long term assets? We can also use a term fixed assets. We can also use a term capital assets for them. So actually we need money to buy capital assets and the money that we need to buy capital assets is called capital. So what is capital? Money needed for long term. So can I say to start any business uh, money is required, some set of money is required and this is required for long term. So the money that we need for long term should be taken from sources which are ready to invest for long term. So now the money that we need for long term can be termed as capital. So can I say the first set of money needed for any business would be long term and this is capital. So now I'm classifying the financial market into its first subset and that is capital market. So capital market can be termed as a place where buyers and sellers would meet for capital that is long term funds. Now the question is from where this money would come and how much time the system would take to raise this money from the market. 2000 crore is relatively a bigger size of fund and contributions from the market would certainly be needed. So this time the company decided to go to public and say let us pool money. Now if they want public contributions the money can actually be raised from three sources. If this company gives the information to the entire market and say if you have confidence why not participate with us. We will pool the money, have huge amount of funds, start the business and grow the funds for everybody. So some of the people who were really convinced with the business model decided to become the partners. Can we say owners? So the first money comes from owner's pocket. Now this time the owners want to be convinced that they would be earning proportionately the gains, the losses, the assets, the liabilities. So as owners should be the uh, shareholders in this. So we understand this instrument given to them which would be entitling them to earn a share of gain, losses, asset liabilities is actually termed as share. Since the instrument is a share of gains and losses, the simple terminology used for the instrument is share. We can use a relatively sophisticated term for uh, share as equity. So to raise this long term funds, we require money for long term and the first source would come from shareholders and this is known as equity. Now again a sub classification of capital market becomes equity market. So can I say some money would be raised from owners and the instrument given to owners is known as equity. Now there would be other set of people in the market who would be ready to give money but they don't want to take the gains or losses. So they don't want to participate in losses and want to take gains. So what they want is they only want some fixed returns. Can we say interest? So money is available, people are ready to give but they want interest and their money back on committed time. So technically they don't want to be owners, they want to be loaners. So two sources have come, one owners, second loaners. In certain exclusive projects which might be done for public benefit, a third source of money also comes which is donors. Technically speaking, government grants and subsidies. So there are three sources of money, owners, loaners and donors. And we call this as an old model of raising money. So three sources, but in normally all commercial projects, we would just have two sources, owners and loaners. So the instrument given to the owners would be known as share or equity 
and the instrument given to the loaners would be known as now money taken from loan is known as debt so one we have equity the other as debt and the instrument is known as shares or equity and the instrument here is known as bond or debenture so now we have two broad areas that is equity and debt again if we try to understand what is equity market where buyers and sellers would meet for ownership rights what is debt market where buyers and sellers would meet for loanership rights that is bonds and debentures so this way we understand that our first classification of financial market goes for long term and this is known as capital market certainly the regulator is required and in our case the regulator is security exchange board of india sebi so this way we bring this now there might be other instruments available which will facilitate long term funds these instruments can be variety of ownership rights like dvrs now what is a dvr normal shares when we say normal shares they are known as ordinary shares ordinary shares make people owners and owners certainly have a right to vote so in ordinary shares the right is one share one vote but certain situations we might change the terms and conditions of the instrument saying that more than one share say for example two shares will have one right 10 shares will have one right if there is a differential voting right given to the shares they are known as dvr in indian market a good example to quote would be tata motors dvr there could be another variant of this which is called nvr nvr is no voting rights and this is currently not visible to the indian markets but then world has certain instruments known as nvrs too then another hybrid instruments would be available known as preference shares in preference shares money can be raised for long term and the owners or the investors are known as shareholders but it is a hybrid form of an instrument having characteristics of equity and debt in equity the investors are known as owners so in preference shares the investors are known as owners in equity the owners have voting rights in preference shares the investors do not have any voting rights if you invest your money through debt that is through bonds and debentures you earn fixed interest that is known as coupons in case of preference shares one earns fixed dividends so it has characteristics of debt it has characteristics of equity though this instrument seems to be a hybrid of all good characteristics of equity and debt still indian market the penetration of preference share is not that great if we wish to see certainly certain companies have issued these kind of preference shares and in balance sheets of certain companies this is visible so these are the instruments for long term money now common sense says if the money is needed for long term the providers should also be interested in giving for long term so all the people who are willing to invest money for long term should be the one who should be participating in the capital market so at one place we would have corporates banks institutions who need money for long term on the other end we would have individuals institutions who are ready to provide money for long term and this becomes a channel or conduit for moving savings and investments for long term this market turns out to be the backbone of any economic system reason is any economic growth is based on capital formation the higher the rate of capital formation the higher the growth of an economy and capital formation means creation of capital assets means long term assets so in this situation we understand 
the capital market turns out to be backbone for any nation and a consistent growth in this is required. So, participation of savings in capital market and retaining this money over a longer period of time would certainly bring growth in any economic system. Now, we need to understand when we are trying to issue shares. So, if any company is issuing shares and giving it to the shareholders, the investors have only one objective. They have faith on the business model. They want to invest the money and over a period of time grow their wealth. But in case of emergency or another opportunity, they would certainly like to seek an exit. So it should not be the case that once invested, you are not able to liquidate or move out of that investment. To facilitate that liquidation of money, we need a market which can make buying and selling of second-hand assets easy. So if the shares or any instrument is issued first time to anybody, it is primary deal and the market is known as primary market. But suppose the instrument is bought and sold second, third, fourth, any number of time, it is a secondary asset and hence the market is known as secondary market. So for all instruments, at least once the instrument would be issued for the first time by the company to the end investor, but thereafter the investors can keep changing hands. So for every market, every instrument, primary, secondary, primary, secondary is required. Indian market currently supports the primary as well as secondary market for all these instruments. To have the secondary market, we need a structured exchange and currently nationalized level, we have three stock exchanges, Bombay Stock Exchange, the oldest of Asian market, National Stock Exchange, the second one, and third, the Metropolitan Stock Exchange, which has recently come and joined the club of stock exchanges. So in the next videos, we will open up the other segment or classification of financial market where the need is for short term. Here, the company was able to raise money for long term, set up the plant machinery and business, but the business would not run without working capital. So the question is, when the money is needed for short term, what are the various avenues available from where one can raise money and how and what instruments are available in the financial system? So in the next video, we'll open up the market for short term money known as money markets. Thank you very much.